G'day, I'm Ian Gordon, and I'm on an underwater mountaintop to see one of the most bizarre looking sharks in the sea, the hammerhead. Every year there's a big reunion around here, and if the local storms permit, I'm going to stick around and join the party. But first, I'm going to have to tear myself away from these guys. Pretty cool, eh? sharks, the freakiest would have to be the hammerhead. With its eyes on the end of stalks, it's a creature you would not want to meet in a dream, let alone in a warm ocean. But don't worry, they're usually pretty hard to find, spending most of their time far offshore. But occasionally, the scolded hammerheads form large schools. Exactly how they do this and how they locate their underwater meeting places is a mystery. I'll count myself lucky just to see this amazing gathering. This is La Paz, a 400-year-old seaport on Mexico's Sea of Cortez. The people of La Paz used to be heavily dependent on the fishing industry. But nowadays, they're finding it harder to compete with the big modern boats from other ports. The Sea of Cortez doesn't just support a healthy fishing fleet. There's also lots of sharks here. And I'm on the way to an underwater sea mountain where scientists first discovered huge schools of scalloped hammerheads. The sharks gather for about three months while the water temperatures are cool enough. And the local storms and water conditions can make diving extremely difficult. My dive guide on this trip is Rocio Lozano, an expert in local marine biology. If I'm going to see the Hammerhead School reunion, I'll need her expertise. Every August, the sharks come from all over the 700 mile long Sea of Cortez, which separates the Baja Peninsula from mainland Mexico. Rocio and I are heading for a seamount known as the Shallows, or as the locals call it, El Bajo. Rocio has been diving there since 1990, and in that time the numbers of hammerheads have varied hugely. It's getting harder and harder to see these amazing gatherings. In 1990 yeah. I saw hundreds, and I thought yeah. that was a normal thing, and then year after year I saw less and less and less, and I started worrying, and then I realized I was very lucky at that time. Yeah. And just when I was giving up that, that we were Distinguishing with them, they were overfished. Then last year, November, we had hundreds again. Hundreds again, great. Yes. I really want to see some hammerheads, so I'm hoping we're going to have some hammerheads out there. They're there. I'm pretty sure they're great. there. What numbers, I do not know. <laughs> it's about 40 miles from La Paz to El Bajo, and there's no shelter once we get out there. So each night, we're going to have to return to the island of Espirito Santo just in case a storm hits. From our nightly anchorage, it's a two-hour trip to El Bajo. But I don't think I can wait that long. And there's a spot here that's got to be worth a dive. The animals that live here can grow just as big as a hammerhead. And in fact, the males can grow twice as heavy as the biggest hammerhead ever caught. They've got big teeth too. With all these school fish around, I can certainly understand why the sea lions are here. They're here because there's a reliable food source all around them. There's even tuna circling around the outside of these bait fish. It's a whole ecosystem in action. 
around this one piece of rock. As you can see, the sea lions behind me are flitting around all over the place, feeding on all this stuff. Lots of food, lots of cover, and that equals an excellent ecosystem for animals to live in. And the sea lions aren't the only ones that know that. Check out these cormorants. These birds are expert divers. These little guys are quite inquisitive. They're coming in and taking a close look at me. Hello? How are you? Cheeky little devil, aren't you? You can see them playing little biting games. And they shouldn't bite hard, but you've got to watch out for it. Hello, come on guys, come and play. Don't you love it? The way they come right in and check you out. Pretty cool, eh? According to our chart and navigational aids, we're in the right spot. So let's go diving with hammerheads. See you on the surface. There are three peaks to El Bajo Seamount. The shallowest point sits in about 60 feet of water. like this green moray eel are one of the typical animals you find here in the Sea of Cortez. Those teeth are covered with an anticoagulant. And what happens if he bites you? What will happen to you is you'll bleed and bleed and bleed. It certainly won't kill you, but boy oh boy it can hurt a lot. Hello mate, how are you? Straight down there, El Bajo drops 2,000 feet to the ocean floor. It's a long way down and I wouldn't like to climb it. But coming down from the surface is the best way to climb a mountain. Uh -huh. It's not much of a landmark unless you know where to look but somehow the sharks find this spot every year. Now, if I could only find them. It seems incredibly hard to find these hammerheads. And there's probably a couple of very good reasons for that. One, the visibility is poor and it's quite hard to actually see the hammerheads. And second, look at all these bubbles I'm making. So much noise with all these bubbles and I'm actually scaring the hammerheads. So I'm going to have to use a special type of stealth technology. So it's back to the surface and we'll see if we can find those hammerheads another way. Rosie, if you see that school of fish just out there, you'll see a Brutus whale lunging yeah. up through it and feeding. It's doing something called lunge feeding. Do you see that very often around here? Yes, it's uh, various whales coming to the Sea of Cortez. Yeah. At this time of the year, Brutus is pretty much the most common class in orcas, but baleen whales, yes. And they're yes. a baleen whale, so everybody thinks that they just eat like little bits of krill, but they're feeding on bigger fish there. Ah, I know, I see. It's rare to see it launching like that though. Yeah. You have a good eye. Yeah. yeah, well what happens is they get around underneath of it and as a as the bigger tuna on the outside ball the fish all up into a tight ball, 
then the Brutus whale just comes straight up underneath and just takes the whole lot, all the fish and everything. It's quite spectacular. It is. And all the birds on tab. Yeah. Today I hope to get as close to hammerheads as I did to the sea lions before. And to do it, I'm going to have to use some specialised equipment. This is a rebreather unit. It's about as technical a piece of equipment as I really want to use at present. This unit reduces the amount of bubbles coming out that I'm exhaling while I'm diving. And that noise from those bubbles and also the flow from the bubbles going to the surface tends to scare the fish and the sharks away. Either that or I've got bad breath. In one way that's true, because every time you breathe out, you get rid of poisonous carbon dioxide, or CO2. That's why a rebreather kit is a bit more complicated than a simple plastic bag. It removes the CO2 from my breath and replaces it with nice fresh oxygen, while releasing fewer bubbles to scare the sharks. But we have to use a dangerous blend of gases to make the system work, so there's a lot more potential for disaster. On top of this, we've incorporated this technology into my communications mask. Diving doesn't get much more complicated than this. Yep. All right, heads up in. Yep. Here you go, mate. As I said, this is about as technical as you can get. Look at all this junk. <laughs> The rebreather still releases a few bubbles, but it's quite enough to get close to this sea turtle. It's an olive ridley, and at this time of year, they gather to lay eggs on Mexico's beaches. And there are the animals that we've come to see. They're so deep though. Looks like they're staying down where the water's cooler. Unfortunately, that's too deep for me. And my cameraman Mike isn't having much better luck. Well, I saw two. That was good. Very distant, very deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had some limited success on that dive. We actually saw two hammerheads, but they were at about 45 metres, and we couldn't go any deeper than 36 metres because of the rebreather units. The water visibility was quite poor, and we have to rethink our strategy a little bit. We need the sharks in slightly shallower water, and we need clearer water. But this is what it's all about when you're looking for sharks. There are actually 40 sharks in this school. Unfortunately, the richness of the Sea of Cortez also makes it very murky, and the storms and rain don't help. This part of Mexico gets just four inches of rain a year, and it looks like most of it's fallen since I've got here. Check this out. Lightning everywhere. When the weather gets bad here in Mexico, it gets really bad fast. This storm is called Dorito, means little ball, and it comes raging in from the ocean and just leaves a wake of destruction everywhere. Seas come up, water visibility goes. So cool. I just love lightning storms. That lightning is hitting the ground. It's just great. <laughs> The storm has stirred up the water even more. We'll just have to wait till it clears and gets cooler so the sharks come to a shallower depth. That means coming back in autumn. Hopefully the sharks will still be schooling. In the meantime, I'd love to know more about how the hammerheads find this spot. Scientists are working on one idea that may just give us a clue. 
While we're using all of these instruments here to find our way, the sharks are navigating backwards and forwards from the sea mountains in strong currents and often total darkness with none of our technology. That's one really clever trick, and there are plenty of scientists who are starting to think that that has to do with their sixth sense. That sense is an electromagnetic one. The bottom of the ocean is shaped by features of solid rock, hidden by deep and often cloudy water. But the magnetism in these rocks can form invisible ridges and pathways. So could the hammerheads be able to sense these magnetic landmarks? It's a very exciting theory. So while I wait for the Sea of Cortez to clear, I'm going to see some convincing evidence for that idea. In Hawaii, scientists at the Institute of Marine Biology are testing just how sensitive the hammerhead sixth sense really is. I'm in Hawaii at Coconut Island and I'm with Steve Kajura and he's developed a really interesting experiment on how hammerhead sharks orient. Steve, can you tell us a bit about it? All organisms in seawater give off an electric current, an electric aura around mm -hmm. their body and the sharks are able to detect this electric field and orient to it. So even if a prey item is say buried under the sand and you can't see it or smell it, the sharks can still detect the electric field and right. orient and dig it up and, and eat it, like a stingray or a... a, a Sol or a flam or something, yeah, something like that. Something like that. All sharks are attracted to the weak electromagnetic fields of their prey, but it's thought that the hammerhead's extra wide head shape gives it an especially sensitive detector. To find out just how sensitive, Steve is using electric currents to create these fields and see what field strength they can detect. The circle of cable on the left has a current running through it, while the one on the right has none at all. How minor is this current we're talking about? This current that you're putting in here? Right. How and minor is it? What I'm applying right now is 7.7 .7 microamps, 5 nanovolts per centimetre, 5 billionths of a volt per centimetre. It's an incredibly good. small figure. The, the way to think about that would be to take a standard flashlight battery and stick one lead in the water in Boston yep. and the other lead in the water in Miami. And a shark swimming directly between those two leads would be able to detect that minute amount of current flowing between uh, those two Just leads. a little torch battery. That's right, that's right. And that's about 1,500 kilometres or so. Right, with so. that, yeah. <laughs> it's tiny. That's amazing. Even though they look identical, the target on the left attracts all the shark's attention. So Steve knows they're not attracted by visual cues, just a tiny magnetic field. There. Look at that. Beautiful. So that's the electric current. See, so he's coming mm -hmm. down, he was biting that just mm -hmm. then. So he's picking up that incredibly small electrical current and having a bite at it. And the other one on the other side's a control. There's no electrical current that's coming correct. through that at all. That's correct. So if a baby hammerhead's magnetic sense is so finely tuned, then maybe the adults use magnetic landmarks to find their way hundreds of miles to hidden meeting places like El Bajo. Autumn in La Paz. The water temperature should have dropped, bringing the sharks up to shallower depths. It's great to see Rocio again, and hopefully those elusive hammerheads haven't dispersed yet. Cortez have changed a lot since we were last here. Well, <clears throat> right now they're not as nice as they were a few weeks ago. Right. They were much better after you left. Yeah. And then it got a little murkier in the last 10 days because of the northern winds. So um, what sort of water visibility do you think we're going to see? Maybe, maybe 60 feet? Um, hopefully 60 feet. Believe me, 60 feet is better than what we saw last oh, time we were here. So, so I'm really yeah. happy with that. Yeah. Let's get out there and yeah. see if we can get some diving happening. Okay, time to go and find some hammerheads. Bye. Good 
luck. El Bajo is a popular dive site, and today we're surrounded by other dive boats. Hammerheads are naturally shy, so all these tourists could just scare them off. Well, I'm still looking for hammerheads. We haven't had much luck yet. I can hear the distant sounds of dolphins in my earphones, but no hammerheads anywhere. If I dive any more today, the nitrogen buildup in my bloodstream will reach dangerous levels. So Rocio and cameraman Adam are going to keep looking for me. Just my luck, they turn up when I'm not there. Maybe I do have bad breath. Growing up to 13 feet long, scallop hammerheads are big enough to be nasty, but are unlikely to attack unless you provoke them somehow. They appear to feed at dusk, so they're not about to come up and start snacking on Rocio and Adam. Woo! We just uh, found a school of hammerheads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was fun. We went down 35 meters, and there were more on the bottom and more on the top, so yeah. we could see all the way to the top, and they're way yeah. behind more. So it was a big Huge. I'm fit to dive again, but now the weather's changing for the worse. The wind has come up, and the sea is getting a lot rougher. So rough that I have to sit down to put on my rebreather unit. I'm also worried that the hammerheads will soon be departing. I'm trying a different strategy. I've been swimming around madly for days trying to find these animals, and we haven't been having a lot of success. Now we're staying very, very quiet, and we're staying on the bottom and not moving around. Hopefully they'll come past here. Waiting is the name of the game this time. Shh. Wow, there must be 30 or 40 animals in that school. If the theory is correct, El Bajo is a magnetic beacon for them all to gather at every year. Females outnumber the males in these schools by about six to one. And that's a big difference. And the scientists just beginning to understand what's going on here. The theory is that the females circle for a few months every year to attract the attention of a mate. I can just make out some scars on the fins of some of the larger ones. That's where a male's latched on with his teeth during the act of mating. Thankfully, the female's skin on their fins is especially thickened to protect against these love bites. But there are nowhere near as many sharks here as there were last year. And statistical information tends to suggest that there's been a massive population decline. It's a real area of concern. I've finally seen El Bajo's legendary hammerhead school. On the last dive of the last day, under the circumstances, I guess I've been lucky. And that's worth celebrating. And who better to do it with than my Mexican mates? Riva! Riva! Hi. I don't mind that El Bajo's hammerheads are so difficult to approach. But I am worried that this magnificent school isn't as large as it once was. The reason is easy to see. In the last 50 years, overfishing has led to the collapse of many different fish stocks. And the Sea of Cortez is no exception. 
Man is an unbeatable competitor. But I'm happy to say that efforts are being made to conserve the fish stocks of the Sea Cortez. And that operators like Rocio are showing that live hammerheads are much more valuable than dead ones. <laughs> Seeing them at El Bajo was a brief but unforgettable experience. And hopefully, I'll be able to join the school reunion in years to come. I love sharks, and to show people how amazing they are is my life's mission. Luckily, it's a mission that will last forever. See you on my next adventure. <laughs>